White privilege is a lie, but liberal privilege is alive and well. Howdy, y'all. Welcome back to the Wright Brothers. This is one half of the duo. Trey will be back next week. First and foremost, shout out to all of our subscribers in the tribe. We love you, and we couldn't do this without all of y'all's wonderful, wonderful support. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. So, as many of you may have heard, Jesse Smollett recently had all 16 felony charges against him dropped, and he's ostensibly able to walk free. I have a huge problem with that, but and a lot of us should, because this shows a complete lack of direction in our current judicial system when it regards instances such as this. Before we jump into all this, we need to really overturn all the stones and make sure that we know exactly what took place before we jump to conclusions on either side of the aisle. So we have to go with the actual facts. Risa Lanier, she actually gave a 15 minute press conference about a month ago where she laid out in excruciating detail everything that went into this this charade that Jesse Smollett attempted to perpetrate. But before we jump into that, let's go ahead and rewind back a, a month away from that. So earlier in January, Jesse Smollett, he attempted to make news headlines with a hateful letter that he claimed was mailed to him, which was later found to have contained nothing more than crushed ibuprofen. But he was upset because that didn't garner the type of furor that he was expecting from the general public. So um, in comes the MAGA hat MAGA country uh, hoax controversy that he started. So obviously we've all seen the surveillance states by now of the Osundaro brothers going to a store and buying the ski masks and the rope and the MAGA hat to take care of this part of the, the hoax, this acting in real life job, if you will. But we have to really remember that this all came about simply because Jesse Smollett was upset about his pay. So his pay is roughly $65,000 per episode of Empire on the TV channel Fox. After 18 episodes, that comes out to $1,170,000. So he was upset and he thought he should be making more money. So that's the first indicator of some sort of privilege mentality that he had. He wanted more than what he already had. He wasn't grateful for what he already had. So he felt the need to orchestrate this elaborate hoax to draw more attention to himself, to cultivate and garner a general compassion from the public, and hopefully increase his social status and his pay as a result of that. But then furthermore, as we go down this rabbit hole, more and more facts begin to emerge. The next of which is that Jesse Smollett is part African-American, his mom is African-American and his father has a Polish and Russian ancestry. So he is biracial. He is half black, if we're being completely correct here. But what he wanted to do was he wanted to appear that he was some sort of victim by this. Obviously, we know Jesse Smollett's a gay man. We know that he's active in the LGBT community. And we know that he's actually vehemently outspoken against President Trump. So with all that information, we now get a clearer picture of kind of where this individual is coming from when he hatched this bold plan to try to pull one over on all of us. And it's really not going to work, but we have to bear that in mind as well. Now, as more details begin to emerge, obviously, we saw his Good Morning America interview where he he sat up there and he let me see if I can do it. He's <laughs> and then they, they pour bleach on me and put a rope around my neck. But then I kept the, the rope around my neck until the police showed up later. It doesn't make any sense, okay? So anyone who has a brain had to have smelled the rat at that point. But we continued on down this path. And as more information came to light, we saw that even though he attempted to stage this attack where there was a security camera, the camera was pointing the wrong way. So he obviously didn't do his due diligence there. But as the police department, bear in mind, this is Chicago. They have lots of other things to do. The, the crime rate in Chicago is ridiculous and they should be focusing their efforts on that. But then this story attracted national attention. So obviously they wanted to make sure that they uncover all the details. So as more details began to emerge, we saw the Osendero brothers and they were the ones who received a check from Jesse Smollett. And they used part of the proceeds from this check to go purchase the ski masks and the rope and the MAGA hat to have their part in this whole charade that went on. Now, thankfully, we have a police system that is willing to do all the research and find all the information. And as they found this information, we began to see that this was not an attack on Jesse Smollett in sub-zero temperatures in Chicago by racist Trump supporters yelling, this is MAGA country. This is not the case. Anyone who knows Chicago knows that it's not, not necessarily the most friendly place for Trump supporters. 
But here's the thing. So obviously, as more information came to light, we found out that this was all an orchestrated scheme to try to attract public attention. We had Jesse Smollett running around saying he's the gay Tupac, which is actually an affront to Tupac, to be honest. Let's be honest. But let's fast forward now. When the information about the attack came out, we saw two prominent politicians, Democratic candidates for 2020, come out and strongly repudiate this these attackers, these would-be attackers. And they actually were trying to push a bill through an anti-lynching bill. Now, it's very interesting. You kind of see how all this starts to play together. We had Cory Booker and we had Kamala Harris, both of whom have their own political agendas to pursue. But what they did was they were able to use the Jesse Smollett controversy as more of a stepping stone to try to advance this anti-lynching bill. And make no mistake, that's not by mistake. Jesse Smollett was actually pictured in a rally for Kamala Harris in a Time's Up t-shirt indicating the current administration. And he even describes himself as being very politically outspoken. Now, I'll take it a step further and say when you make a threat against the president, as Jesse Smollett has done several times, wishing that people would kick the president's, you know what, what have you. That's not necessarily being politically outspoken, that's being politically incendiary. So he tries to downplay exactly his role as far as that's concerned. We saw Cory Booker and Kamala Harris both come out and say that this is just a terrible thing. Jesse Smollett's a great person. I don't know why anybody would do this to him. Ah, this is the worst thing that could ever happen. Those racist <laughs> went and did it again. And it was all debunked in the end. But what's even more interesting about that is now we see involvement with possible Obama ties. So Kimberly Fox was the prosecutor. She actually recused herself after having some interaction with Tina Chen, who was Michelle Obama's former chief of staff. And Kimberly Fox, basically what she said was she was trying to get the police department to turn the case over to the FBI. She indicated that. And then a family member caught wind of it. And the family member said, oh, my gosh, this would be a huge victory for us. So everything is starting to weave itself together very interestingly. And in the end, it was Joe Maggots. He and bear in mind the first four letters of his name, the irony, if that is not lost on me. Uh, he, he is actually the lawyer who is embroiled in the controversy with Michael Avenatti. But but with all that being said, I digress. Joe Maggots is the one who made the decision to drop all these charges against him. And for the first time in my life, I actually agreed with Rahm Emanuel on something, the mayor of Chicago. And Rahm Emanuel said this was a whitewash of the, of the judicial system. And this is correct, because what this does is this shows that there's one set of rules that applies to the common people, to you and to me. It's another set of rules that applies to people who are in positions of influence, power, or prestige. And this should not be the case. In America, we have a judicial system that's supposed to be non-partial based on what your status is or what have you. And we've seen time and time again with not just Jesse Smollett, but we saw Hillary Clinton get off with doing all kinds of things that the average American would get sent to jail for for the rest of their lives. But this is the example of liberal privilege that we see. And it's infuriating to see because there are people out there who possibly have hateful intent or who are malevolent. And when we spend our time focusing on this charade by people like Jesse Smollett, who's upset because he's making $1.17 million and is unhappy with that, we take time away from the police force to actually focus on those issues that really are important, especially in a city like Chicago. So I want to know, uh, you know, I want to know what your thoughts are on this whole controversy. Um, obviously, I am displeased with the outcome. And we need to see justice served in every case. Obviously, this case has been sealed, so we don't really know any other details. We're not going to get them. And Jesse Smollett said, this is the worst time of my life. But you know what? You did it to yourself. Share your thoughts on this video. Let me know what you think, one side or the other, what have you. All we ask is that you contribute to the conversation. Check out our, our friends at the Two Classy Gentlemen podcast at Let's Be Frank and at uh, Z Education for more conservative content. We hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please feel free to smash that likes button, share it with your friends and subscribe if you haven't already. We're still growing. We wanna make sure that we do everything that we can to make sure our identity politics is dead. But without further ado, thanks and giga. The first revolution is when you change your mind about how you look at things and see that there might be another way to look at it that you have not been shown. The revolution will not be televised, not be televised. There'll be no rerun, brothers and sisters. The revolution will be live.